Good morning everybody and welcome to morning prayer on Thursday the 3rd of September in this 12th week of Trinity. Um, I'm here as you can see in St Mark this morning. Um, one of my privileges is uh, being able to come into all the church buildings to have some quiet and peaceful time and it's uh, yeah, it is, it is quite a privilege, um, a bit chilly sometimes in the winter, um, but still a peacefulness of inside one of our beautiful buildings. So here we are from St Mark for morning prayer. This morning we commemorate uh, St um, Gregory the Great, who uh, was Bishop of Rome in, he was made Bishop in 590. Um, and. Um, known as a great teacher of the faith and and it was he who started the the missionary um, aspect of roman catholicism uh, so it was he who sent out augustine and i think Melitus and and i'm sure many others um, into us here in the uk um but but across europe and um and it was he who really brought um, the faith to be the the Catholic, the Roman Catholic faith um, across the known world. Um, and, and we had that, as you know, for many years until um, not Henry VIII, but just actually before Henry VIII when the Reformation began. And uh, of course the story of Henry VIII is all wrapped up in that Reformation time uh, when, when people began to question um, whether the Pope did have authority over everyone and, uh, and the, some of the practices in those days had gone a bit awry um, and were frowned upon um, quite rightly uh, but then we can all go a bit awry sometimes um, and so the birth of the Reformation but, uh, but Gregory um, was perhaps the, not the founder um, but definitely the enabler of that to happen across the world. So um, in our collect this morning, we will remember Gregory the Great. Now, if you are at home and want to say morning prayer for yourself, um, then you will want the Psalms this morning. Um, and the Psalm appointed for this morning is 113, 113 is our Psalm. And our Old Testament reading, is from 2 Samuel, chapter 15, verses 13 to the end of that chapter. Um, and then going on to Acts, which I will be reading in a moment. That's our New Testament reading this morning, continuing through Acts. We are now chapter 9, verse 32 to the end. And I will read that in a moment. So let us pray. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And the canticle before we hear our reading. Thursday's canticle. I have given you as a light to the nations, and I have called you in righteousness. Thus says God who created the heavens, who fashioned the earth and all that dwells in it, who gives breath to the people upon it, and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord, and I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the captives from the dungeon, from the prison, all those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name, my glory I give to no other. 
Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Amen. I have given you as a light to the nations. I have called you in righteousness. So our New Testament reading from this morning, taken from the book of Acts, chapter 9, verse 32 to the end. Now, as Peter went here and there among the believers, he came down to the saints living in Lydda. There he found a, name, uh, a man named Aeneas, who had been bedridden for eight years, for he was paralysed. Peter said to him, Aeneas, Jesus heals you. Get up and make your bed. And immediately he got up, and the residents of Lydda and Sharon saw him and turned to the Lord. Now in Joppa there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At that time she became ill and died. When they had washed her and laid her in the room upstairs, since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples who heard that Peter were there sent two men to him with a request, please come without delay. So Peter got up and went with them, and when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put them all outside, and then knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Meanwhile, he stayed in Joppa for some time with a certain Simon, who was a tanner. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Wow, an amazing story, um, healing of a paralysed man, and then the healing of, of, of Tabitha, uh, or Dorcas. Um, I think I prefer Tabitha, nicer uh, translation of the name, I think. And Tabitha, um, a leader in, in that time, um, another one of the women who were leaders of churches in, in those days. Um, who um, everyone loved um, and was uh, worked wonderfully and obviously we hear made clothing probably for the poor or the widows or, or the elderly. Um, very much loved and brought to life from death. Um, a, a huge miracle this time performed by Peter. Um, there are stories, there are stories around of these miracles happening in our times now. Um, we do hear, um, but they can't, they're, they're hearsay, and we, we don't really know whether they're true or not. But healing, I'm sure many of you have um, either experienced it yourself or, or known people who have been miraculously healed um, by prayer. Um, and that's why we pray, of course, because that healing does happen. But it doesn't happen for everyone, and that's when it becomes hard. That we might be praying fervently, we might have hundreds of people praying, the whole church, all our friends may be praying, and yet that healing doesn't happen. And that's a difficult one to swallow, isn't it? I have quite a, um, quite a list here. For my, um, my daily prayers, um, and um, some of which we use on Sunday, of people we're praying for. And, and if I look back um, through my lists, not, not just in lockdown, but you know, for, for years, if I look back of those that we've prayed for, I, I can tick off many that have been healed. Um, and, and some would say that was prayer, and some would say, well, that was good medicine. 
Um, and I think that's a bit of both, isn't it? I, I think, you know, to discount medicine as a way of healing uh, is completely wrong because there are many that, um, many of you who have been through horrible treatments this year um, and are well. And, and so that's God working through our doctors and our nurses. Whether they're Christian or not, I think God is working through them. But it is hard, isn't it, when none of that works and people we love die. Especially if they were young or too young or you know, vibrant and full of life and, and they just shouldn't die. And it's so hard to, to accept that. But that's where our faith comes in, really, isn't it? It's not that we should expect healing, because that healing might be later. None of us know what happens after death. We, we can read our Bibles and, and have a faith. Um, but no one's ever died and come back to tell us the story. Oh, but wait, there was somebody, wasn't there? Jesus died. He was buried, dead for three days, and then back with us, not recovering, not needing health care, but back fully with us. And he tells us that there is something more. And although we mourn those we've lost and loved, and, and many are taken too soon. We have to have that faith, don't we, in what Jesus tells us, what the Bible tells us, that this life is transitory. Let's face it, we were all made to die. There is no one that lives forever in this plane, in this life. We live on elsewhere. And that doesn't stop us grieving and it doesn't stop us missing and it doesn't stop the pain of losing someone we love. But I hope that our hope lets us know that that's not the end and there is more. So let us pray. Friends and followers of Jesus, we've come together because of his love for us and our faith in him. Let us now pray for all who need the strength and guidance of God's Spirit in meeting the challenges that life brings. We pray for all churches around the world for every place touched by this pandemic. For churches, church buildings who lie empty, but whose congregations are still strong in faith and love all over the world. We pray in our diocese for our bishops, Tim, David and Debbie. We pray for James, our area dean, for all who teach us and help us in our faith. We pray that they will serve in humility and holiness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for our Queen, our government, leaders of nations, that they will promote peace and justice freedom and opportunity, that they will seek a way forward for us in this country, for all who are suffering the economic loss of this pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. 
And we pray for those places in the world where food is scarce, jobs are few, life is dangerous. We pray that the strong would help the weak, that you would show us ways to help those who are suffering. We pray for all who have to leave homes, families, livelihoods to seek a better life elsewhere. And we give thanks for all who try to help to bring peace, encouragement and hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for those who are vulnerable in our own communities, in our own neighbourhoods. We pray particularly at this time for our schools here in Ampfield, in Hursley and in North Baddersley, as they prepare for the children to come back full time to school, praying for the teachers and particularly for our head teachers, for the families and children a safe return to school, a healthy return to school and to learning. And we pray for all of those who we know are ill, in pain, undergoing treatment. Pray for all of those on my prayer list, on your prayer lists, in all our hearts and minds. We give thanks for all who care for them in the medical professions and at home. We pray that they will be healed and restored to a better quality of life, wherever that may be. And we pray for those in the darkness of grief, because they've been parted from the person that they love. For all whose funerals will take place in this coming week, for all those who have anniversaries at this time of year. We pray that they will be comforted and lifted by hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so our collect for today. Merciful Father, you chose your Bishop Gregory to be a servant of the servants of God. Grant that, like him, we may ever long to serve you by proclaiming your gospel to the nations, and may ever rejoice to sing your praises through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. And so we pray with confidence as our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So may the Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Bless you. Have a wonderful week. Bye.